Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out a very attractive all-in-one for Lenovo. This is called their A540, and it's very adjustable. So we looked at this in uh, New York City at that Pepcom event I was at a few weeks ago, and now we've got one uh, here in the studio to actually play with ourselves. And what's cool about this is that it can go uh, pretty much down to like 90 degrees here. So you can, uh, if you have kids, it's kind of a neat educational tool because there are some apps that uh, really let kids get involved with their fingers and you can uh, track up, up to 10 different fingers at the same time. So it's a 10 point uh, multi-touch display. So pretty neat there. Uh, you've got a lot of nice adjustability here. So it's very easy to find a good uh, viewing angle on it. Now this one uh, is equipped with a 23.8 inch display. This is 1080p, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, it's got, this one has an i7, a fourth generation Intel processor, i7 dual core, uh, 4558 at 2.8 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM and a, ter a one terabyte hard drive. This is the entry level model. It's about $1,100 now at the time that I'm recording this on the Lenovo site. They do have one that's about 1500, same design, uh, but it has an NVIDIA GPU. So you can get a little bit better gaming performance perhaps out of that uh, more expensive unit. Let's take a look at the ports on here real quick. There is an HDMI port here, uh, but this HDMI port uh, is not for video out, it is for video in. So you can turn this into a monitor where if you plug in an HDMI source, it will switch over and use that as a monitor. So you can't plug in a secondary display to this thing. It's only an input, not an output. Uh, there are three USB 3.0 ports here as well as an SD card reader, but the SD card has to be put in upside down. So uh, make sure you do that before you put the card in, but it goes in, it doesn't go flush. It does snap in, but it kind of sticks out a little bit. So it might be something where you just kind of pop the card in briefly and then uh, take it back out. On the other side, there's a few more ports on the back here. Uh, you have a, a little dongle here that's taking up one of the USB ports or the USB port on the back uh, that is used for the wireless keyboard and mouse. It does have Bluetooth built in, but the keyboard and mouse are using Lenovo's own proprietary protocol. So you're going to give up a USB port uh, somewhere on the chain. I just decided to give it up on the back there. Uh, there is a headset adapter here. There is a 1080p uh, webcam on the front, so you can talk to people on that. Uh, you've got gigabit ethernet here, as well as your power is, is in, going in there, uh, and you have a Kensington lock. I did want to talk about the power brick briefly because it does require a power brick, a pretty large one here, as you can see. So the uh, power is not built into the device. Uh, you'll need to make sure you have a spot for that power brick when you uh, get everything up and running. So that is the overall hardware, a really nice, attractive design. Again, all the guts of the computer are located in the base here, uh, and uh, it's a pretty nice uh, looking machine overall. So what we're going to do now is boot it up and see how it performs. Now, I apologize for the odd angle here. This screen is very reflective. So as you can see here, if I don't get it at the right angle, you're going to see a lot of other stuff reflecting back. This is something to keep in mind if you are uh, using this near a window or something because it is reflecting back a lot of light. You'll also notice too, it looks a little bit cloudy, right? I mean, I, I've been noticing this throughout the uh, course of using this display in different rooms around the house. It's got some kind of film on it and it just looks a little bit cloudier than it should. It doesn't feel like, it feels like the screen is just not as uh, crisp as it could be. And I thought initially it was one of those things that you peel off, but it isn't. This is just the way uh, it looks. Now, if we go over to uh, something like the New York Times, you can see how nicely this uh, this i7 processor performs on here. So the web pages pop up very, very quickly. Uh, it can render things very fast. This is something that you would expect out of a machine of this class. So uh, really nice performance there. I uh, will go hit up my YouTube page here and see how it does with uh, video. So maybe we'll load up one of my recent uh, videos on my YouTube channel. We'll uh, get through the ad here and you can take a look at uh, how it performs with uh, loading up videos from YouTube. I'll switch it into the 1080p mode here so you can see how fast that comes up. So uh, nice performance here. This is on my Wi-Fi right now, so I'm very impressed with that. It does have wireless N on the base model, but there is faster AC wireless on uh, the other versions out there. So there are uh, faster wireless options available, but for most web browsing, for most of what people are gonna do, uh, this is gonna be fine for what you're gonna handle there. So as you can see, the video comes up very quickly. Uh, on the Octane benchmark test, which is a test that I use to measure the performance of uh, the web browser on here, something that Google has come up with. So it puts it in line with other uh, i7-based machines of this processor generation. So not too bad, not as fast as some of the newer uh, Intel chips out there, but uh, you're really not gonna notice the difference between this fourth generation chip and the newer fifth generation chips that are uh, making their way out into the marketplace right now. 
Uh, the audio is pretty good on here. It's about where other all-in-ones are. They've got this really complicated Dolby control panel that you can use to kind of tweak the audio settings to where you'd like it to be. By default, it was a little bit tinny to me, so I was kind of poking around in here a little bit uh, to try to balance the sound out a little bit better for my taste. So uh, you might need to spend some time in here or just do something easier, just go out and buy some speakers and uh, plug it in and get a better sound out of those. Because if you really want good sound, I would suggest uh, getting external speakers there. And this being the base model, we will do some work on here. So we'll load up my newsletter template on uh, Microsoft Word so you can get a feel for how everything uh, runs on here. Everything does uh, respond very quickly, very snappy performance. Again, we've got that uh, i7 processor in there. As we scroll through the document here, you can see it renders very quickly. I can go in and maybe uh, make some adjustments to the image here. I like to use this template because it really has a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of rendering to do. As you can see, as I move the image around here, it's very quickly reflowing the text. I can go uh, pop into uh, maybe the top here on the, uh, the title and I can just type my name in here and you can get a feel for how everything responds there. So nice uh, word performance for sure. And uh, I think it'll be a good machine for uh, getting some work done uh, when you need to get it done. And that's kind of where the base model performs very well. But now what we're gonna do is take a look at something that might you know, challenge the base model a little bit, which is gaming. We're gonna look at Minecraft now. So here we are running Minecraft. And this is a really good game for this kind of computer because it's not overly taxing and uh, it will run well enough. It's certainly a very popular game, so you don't have to worry about uh, the kids not being able to get their Minecraft fix in on it, but uh, it's not going to be great for the AAA titles out there. So as we're getting you know, about 60 frames per second here in Minecraft, you would not get the same kind of performance out of like Grand Theft Auto 5 or Fallout 4 or some of the other uh, popular AAA games that are out in the market now or coming soon. So you might want to look at that uh, other version of this, the higher end model that has the built-in uh, graphics processor. This is using the uh, Intel graphics, which is kind of built into the uh, Intel chipset, uh, which isn't bad for this kind of stuff, but not great for the really high-end gaming activities. But you can see we're getting a pretty good frame rate here, around 60 frames per second as we're uh, moving around here, which I think is pretty good for Minecraft, especially without a uh, discrete graphics processor. So that is the Lenovo A540. This is probably the most attractive machine Lenovo has put together, really nicely performing, uh, definitely on, in line with other uh, all-in-one PCs from Lenovo as well as their competitors. So it performs nicely. My only real gripe is the screen. It is very reflective and it is a little bit cloudy for me. I'm not sure uh, what kind of film again is on this thing, but it is uh, a little bit cloudy depending on uh, what you have reflecting off of it or near it. I would definitely keep it away from a window or something where you're going to get light reflecting back uh, so you really want to think about where you're going to place this thing. And if you really can't get into a spot where you don't have a lot of light reflecting back and forth, uh, this may not be the right choice. You may want to find something with a matte display that doesn't reflect light as much as this one might. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.